Welcome back to the Waffle Box. We are modeling. <laughs> we are uh, creating these awesome modals. We, we added dismiss buttons in the last lesson and these are working really great. We also have keyboard support. So we're gonna hit the escape key and we are good to go here. Now in this lesson, I wanna consider the accessibility of, of our modals. And in particular, there's one recommendation that we, we, we really should implement in terms of accessibility for our modals. And that is a feature called focus trapping. And what I mean by that is whenever we are using keyboard navigation in particular to navigate these modals, what we have here is I, I'm going to tab over to our subscribe button. I'm going to hit the enter key on my keyboard. I can hit tab and then my modal immediately has focus. So I can focus on the close button. It's going to read its ARIA uh, label or its screen reader label that says close dialogue. I'm going to tab. Uh, it allows to read the content and all that good stuff that we get inside of a screen reader. However, if I continue to tab, you'll notice that my tab focus is now moved on to other elements of the screen. So for example, if I just keep tabbing through everything, I'm kind of going through the dev tools right now, so you normally wouldn't have those open, but you'll notice in the background up here, I'm actually tabbing through our navigation and you can imagine with a uh, screen reader, it's gonna be doing things like, hey, here's the navigation menu, here's the subscribe button, here's the choose a plan button. And I'm like doing things behind the modal, which doesn't make a lot of sense because whenever a modal is open, visually the user is kind of ignoring all the stuff that's going on behind because they're focusing on the modal content and you want your keyboard users to do the same thing. And the way we can accomplish that is through what's called a focus trap, where basically when we get to the buy now button, if I hit tab, I actually wanna loop back around to our close button because I wanna trap the keyboard focus inside the context of our mobile so that users know that, hey, this is the only thing you're looking at right now. We have a modal dialogue and it's important that you know this is here. Let's keep your keyboard focus inside of that dialogue until you've chosen one of these actions or you've dismissed it. So that's uh, it's gonna be something we can add. It's gonna be JavaScript that we're gonna add to our toggle component that we have here. And specifically, we're gonna utilize the key down method or our uh, key down listener here to say, whenever you press tab, if you've focused inside of a modal, let's go ahead and trap your focus whenever you press that tab key. So first of all, let's create an option here because we don't want this on by default. You certainly don't want this to trap focus um, in, in all scenarios with your toggles. So let's create a new option called trap focus false. So we want that to be false by default. And uh, in the case of our modal here, we're gonna turn that back on. Trap focus is going to be true. So uh, whenever you've enabled trap focus like we have on our modals, we're gonna say when you've enabled this in our key down listener, so let's jump down to here. Uh, right now we're checking to see is key control enabled. Um, let's get the closest toggle container. Let's dismiss on escape, etc. So let's come down to the bottom here and it says navigate on arrow keys. And after it says navigate on arrow keys, let's create a new else if here. Uh, we'll say else if this.config.trap focus, first of all. So let's make sure you've enabled that. And e.key is equal to, uh, and let's just double check keycode.info. If I hit tab, sure enough, event.key is going to be tab in that case. So if uh, you press the tab key, then let's trap your focus. And the way we actually wanna trap focus is we, we kinda wanna, uh, it might be a little weird because we wanna allow the tab key to continue to go back and forth. But basically we wanna say if you have tabbed out of uh, the, the element, then let's loop back around. And fortunately, because in our refactoring episode, we refactored the get focusables method that uh, we are using to navigate with arrow keys, we can actually reuse that down here to get all of our focusables, which includes the current focus index. And we can basically say uh, with this get focusable data, we can say if your current tab index, whenever you press the tab key is the last focusable, so if your current tab index is uh, the very last thing that's in the modal dialog in this case, then let's focus on the first focusable. So that's fairly easy. Uh, we can say get focus data, const focus data equals this dot get focusables, just like we did up above here. We'll pass in the toggle container and e dot target, just like we did up here. And now that we have this focus data, let's trap focus. So we'll say if, 
focus uh, focus data dot focus index is greater than or equal to focus dot focus data dot focusables dot length minus one. So we're basically saying if your current focus index is the very last item. That's what this focusables dot fo but dot length minus one is because it's a zero based index. So if your focus index is three and you have a length of four, then that means you're on the last item. So that's why we're doing you know the length, which would be four minus one. So if, if your focus index is three and you're on uh, you know the, the, the fourth item, then let's go ahead and make sure we trap the focus. So then we wanna prevent the default action. So only, you wanna make sure e.prevent default is inside of this if. Because up here, we've pressed tab, but we didn't necessarily press tab on the last focus item. So you want to make sure you wait and prevent the default until you get to the last item that you're tabbing through. And then we're going to prevent the default and we'll say focus data dot focusables of zero. So we're going to take the first item and we'll say dot focus. And so that way you'll see here if we tab into our dialog and I press the tab from buy now, it's going to loop back to subscribe and I can just keep looping around. So we've basically done a trap focus. Uh, might be a little weird to focus on the subscribe button itself. So you could always certainly change this to like a one if you want it to focus on the first thing inside of it. So that way it'll trap the focus inside the dialog. That's probably a little better in this case actually, but we would have to make sure that uh, the first HTML item was always the, the toggle button itself. And I don't know that I wanna verify that. Um, I don't know, this is kind of questionable as to whether you want to do that. Uh, it may not uh, work in all cases. So you just have to tweak it based on your application. Um, but I think this is going to work well. We're, you can see we're trapping focus. We're keeping the user inside of this loop so that they're always going to be inside of the dialog itself. I can say by now, and then it's going to dismiss the dialog. And now my focus is going to continue as it normally would. I can tab through stuff on the page. So that is great. That's exactly what we want. Very cool. So I think this is going to do it for our modal dialogues. We, we created a really cool dialog interaction in our, our Waffle Box application. We created a really high quality dialog as well as our high quality drop down menus. They all have keyboard control. They're very accessible. Uh, we're trapping focus. We're doing uh, escape button to escape out of them. Uh, we just have all kinds of cool stuff we have now added. And it has definitely increased the complexity of our uh, toggle script that we've created, but we're still only using a single component to do all of this stuff. At this point, we've done switches. We have done um, ta simple toggles that are turning elements on and off. We have created tabs, accordions, drop downs, and modals all through a single toggle operation, a toggle interaction. And as you can see, with all of those different components, a lot of your basic web interaction components really do just boil down to a simple toggle. All this script, all this crazy stuff we're doing in here, um, it all boils down to this set state method, right? This is really all it's doing, is it's setting a button attribute and setting a target class. That's kind of what it all boils down to. There's a lot of nuance around that. There's a lot of icing on the cake, but uh, it, it all boils down to a toggle. And, and, and just how much you can accomplish with this right here is really quite amazing, I think. I think it's pretty awesome that we can do just that much with a simple toggle. And um, and, and it's good too, you know, because we, we have a very simple way to do a lot of different things in our web application. And we have a lot of different CSS to change the presentation, um, but it's also gonna work really well for our users because we've created some cool stuff in this case. Oh, and don't forget, don't forget an entry animation. I forgot to drop that in, but you should definitely like on your uh, modal dialogue, Add that drop in animation there. That's a really minor thing, but just notice how it adds some movement to it as it's entering and it fades in a little bit. I think that's gonna really improve your modal dialogues as well. Can't believe I forgot that, that's awful. <laughs> but you can add that yourself. Uh, we already created that drop in. It's the same animation that's on our drop down menus, um, but I think it works well too in the context of a modal. Again, the idea is not necessarily to uh, make it appear in this amazing way, but more to just draw the eye to that content and say, hey, oh, there's a little movement there. That's some new content that appeared. Let's focus on that.
All right, this is awesome. We have completed our modals and in the next lesson, I don't know what we're gonna do. I'm gonna have to go figure it out because we've done a lot of cool stuff here. So uh, let me do some brainstorming and we'll come back here in a few moments and we will check out some new web interaction functionality. It's gonna be fun.